As a bomb technician, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how bad. I don't like the attention, people staring at me and kids looking at me and stuff like that. I didn't give a shit anymore. I didn't care about myself, I didn't care about my loved ones. I was, I was kind of hollow. Most of our warriors, they're sitting in their house, they're living like hermit crabs and they're not doing anything. They're wasting away and it's really sad. It's a trial that rivals all trials, you know, mourning the loss of your body parts, right? So you get out in the world, and the world is not accessible. And so you're going to have to adapt. There was a tremendous amount of volume of wounded warriors. And as a result, there was a taxing of the, the services that the military medical system could provide. There was a group that was going to be doing a presentation to go on a hunt for wounded guys. And so I was like, shoot, I'm there. A given warrior, they would receive about an hour of physical therapy five days a week. A typical day in the hunting community or fishing community is 10 hours. We've got this fella, he's pretty buff, and he looks like he could take an alligator down if he tried. Getting a tag for an out-of-state hunter is $980. It's expensive. Wow. Those combat vets, they need the help, you yes. know. Red, right, and blue, that's all you need. There's nothing outside that's ADA compliant. Everything is as nature intended it. The pain and the sweat and the discomfort kind of fall away. Wounded Warrior Outdoors, you know, kind of encouraged me and inspired me that things are going to be okay. You know, you're losing your leg, but you know, you got this. You can really see that the, that in this one week period of time, our warriors are given the therapeutic equivalent of months in the hospital. No matter what kind of hell we go through in life, we are proud to say we are American because of the things that we've done for this country. The Heritage Classic, which is what we're calling this, is, has been put together at the request of warriors that want to participate in an active shooting environment. It's more of a, a group therapy session with a hunting addiction. <laughs> we're going to draw for team name first. So what team are you? Jim is numb nuts, and come on, that title fits perfectly. You gotta be shitting me. <laughs> he doesn't really have a face for television. He's got the voice for radio, though. And he reminds me more of Forrest Gump than anything. <laughs> Mangina. Brian Mangina works out perfectly. He kind of looks like a white cousin it. Well, Brian is missing, you know, an arm, and then he's only got two fingers left on one hand. It loses the grip on the knife, and it slides down and cuts one of his two good remaining fingers that he has left. I remember Ron saying one of the teams is going to be Hillary. <laughs> oh shit, we're going to be here all day. I'm going to end up getting stuck with Hillary. You wait and you watch. JD's lifelong dream is to go on naked and afraid. The next step about being naked and afraid is you got to be a good hunter. Check this out. Hey! Well, shit. Consider him butt scooting across the jungle. That'll be lovely. Y'all probably going to have to edit this part out. Oh, you're going to be Hillary. My sense of pride just crumbled, and everybody around me started treating me like Hillary. <laughs> Team Hillary. We're going to make her proud. Get out of here. Nice, Matt. This dude, a-hole. Didn't like him. Record that shit. Despised him in the hospital. We'll go with Dingleberry. Yeah. All right. I mean, I kind of want to call him Gandalf because he's so damn grumpy. I'm telling you, everybody <laughs> that meets me the first time, they say, that guy, I don't know. Really, with Matt and I, it's a love-hate relationship. I don't even know what I should show you. I made you a meme. <laughs> one moment we're wanting to choke each other out, and another one, it's like, all right, come here, you know, bring it in for the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a better hunter. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. She's more athletic, I'm a better hunter. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> With this being a three-gun competition, we have a pistol shoe, a long-range shoe, and then, of course, the stagecoach shoe. We're also throwing a balloon in there that they cannot shoot. Going through, he's added these red balloons that are five penalty points. If it's a red balloon and you shoot it, you're losing points. Everybody's headed out, and Team Numbnuts and Team Dingleberry are going to start out at pistols. We'll go out there and we'll be uh, shooting some pistols at balloons and seeing how many uh, targets we can hit. All right, who's up? My team's pretty solid. I think we're going to end up doing pretty dang good in the competition. We have uh, pretty solid shooters. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, Team Numb Nuts is there with us, so I gotta, gotta sit there and listen to Jim. My team in the United States Army set the bar real high. Matt, you just wanna not shoot or what? Oh man, you sure you, sure you wanna shoot? You sure you wanna do this? I mean, you might as well just pack them and go home. I think I'll give it a run. All right, okay. I don't know if it's a triple amputee thing or whether it's an Army thing, but they all try to get one over on the Marine. It's hard for me to even acknowledge Marines because that's such an inferior group of uh, combat individuals. Damn, I really don't care how our team does as long as Jim loses so he can shut his mouth. All right, guys, eyes and ears, please. We're going hot. It's hard to even make fun of Brian. You cannot get the words out of your mouth fast enough before he's already come with a comeback with what you're gonna say. So I've got no wrist to mess things up with. Brian's cheating because he doesn't have a wrist on that side, so you know, ooh, 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 ooh. Your other eight fingers getting in the way, Matt? Keep talking, Brian. Kirsty, you know, is always talking about how she's the best at everything and how she can win anything and how she's just like this incredible long distance shooter and all this stuff. One balloon? Are you kidding me? I shot like shit. Everybody's watching, you know you're gonna miss. <laughs> I feel bad for all the other teams. They just got weak shooters and it, it's sad, you know, but what can you do? <laughs> A lot of these guys have never done any sort of precision shooting or long range stuff. So we have one day to get them through a crash course. You know, they've learned a lot in two days about long range shooting. They're trying to put it all together, but there's a lot that goes into this, but they're doing, they're doing good. What's up, Larry? Go ahead. Hit, nice shot. <laughs> long range went great perform really well at that, and we're moving on to the stagecoach. I've never met a triple amputee from the Vietnam War. It's basically like looking at myself 100 years later. Hey, yeah. we still love you. You're a World War II vet. <laughs> That's an improvement, because Ron always used to introduce me as a Civil War vet. Civil, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of guys on the team that hunt, so they should be able to shoot. Me especially is going to have to perform a little bit better. It's a tough one to, for anybody right. to get through. It's difficult. I'll be honest with you, horrible performance on my part. It went from everybody feeling pretty cocky a little bit earlier to it's pretty quiet right now. Get the ball. Just, just the ball. Yeah, We're going out like here with the stagecoach. Man, Brian's a shit show. Hi. One of my I guess apprehensions, especially after my injury, was handling firearms again. WWO showed me that that fear was an illegitimate one. The strategy is to just have that smooth, steady press on that trigger. The manipulation of triggers is the key on that one. As we're rolling down through there, wardrobe malfunction hanging out the back, but upside down is his other leg, his prosthetic leg, had fallen off and was hanging right off the back of the gator. <laughs> little wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> I mean, how often do you get to there shoot suppressed from a moving vehicle? So, especially with nobody shooting back at you. And I kind of relegated myself to saying, hey, you know what? Two out of three <gasps> isn't bad. Right now we're Team Hillary. We're at the stagecoach run. My goal is to like focus really on the targets up close. Try not to waste so much ammo on the long range targets. Basically that's our team strategy right now. And when they start talking about me, you need to have me like rolling up, maybe like an orchestra playing in the background. And I knew if I could shoot over 10, the other teams are gonna be pretty nervous. We have to shoot it with our off hand, apparently JD always has to shoot offhand, but I make the argument that he only has one hand, so that is now his dominant hand. So he's shooting dominant hand and everybody else is at a disadvantage. Well, little did they know that I am actually left hand dominant. Hit! Yeah, I, I, that's unfair. Hit! Hit! 
Hit! I'm on it today. Hit! Woo! Out of ammo. Woo! I'm uh, pretty confident with my team Hillary pick there. Hit! 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 I know my team did the best, you know, I know we did. Team Dingleberry is up next. You know, I always look forward to shooting of, of any kind. I honestly think my strengths are going to be uh, the stagecoach. Team Hillary, if I, if I really step back and let my ego go a little bit, I think Team Hillary's got the advantage. We've had a great day, but uh, now it's time to head back to the lodge and tally up the scores and see where we stand. Numb Nuts came in pretty numb <laughs> at uh, 284 points. Dingleberry came in at 293 points. Hillary came in at 396 points. And Mangina came in at 372 points. As much as it pains me to say this, but because solely because of the name of the team that won, our winner's Hillary. Well, Team Hillary, you know. She may have lost the presidency, <laughs> but she won the competition. Yeah. 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 She'd be proud. Matt Amos, Brian Myers, Jim. Jim, you, especially you. We got to go. The competition was great, the teams were great, the games were amazing. It really kind of pushed you into different positions that you weren't necessarily comfortable in. I can't wait to do it next year. Ventures Enabled is adapting and overcoming. You know, something we learn in the military to adapt and overcome. For me, you know, I mean, you're, you're a United States Marine, you're a squad leader of Marines. And then you get out and they lose those goals because they're just kind of lost. They don't know exactly what they want to do. <laughs> right on, brother. The Wounded Warriors affair here. What a fantastic group of men and what they went through, tough, hand-to-hand -hand fighting. And, and they endured all of that. Okay, so we're going to the Little Pine. Oh, yeah. I've never done that before. You talk to them today, and they're charged up. They're optimistic. They are not poor me. We come live to you with a moose who has survived a hunting experience. Yeah, you know, you just you, you, your first reaction is, Moose, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. <laughs> and you wonder if you're supposed to laugh, but you know what you are. Explain to us what that hunter did to you. So there I was, Jim, balls deep in this other moose. Can I say that on TV? We personally just like to be treated like men, you know? I fought for our country and, you know, I don't like coming home and being treated like, you know, a person in a wheelchair. I like somebody walk up, punch me in the arm and say, hey man, how was, how was last night or whatever, you know? That's all anybody wants after a traumatic experience like that. We just want to regain independence and move forward with our lives and not have to look back. Inevitably, there will be another conflict where they're going to be more wounded to come through and then, you know, we'll still be around to help those warriors out and transition um, just as WWO helped us transition. Hell, I want to keep this thing going for the next 25 years and continue helping as many guys and gals as we can. Serving my country was one of the greatest things I ever had the honor of doing, and I'd do it again tomorrow if I could. I told him last night, as one veteran to another veteran, I, I salute you. There was a lot of, in the back of my mind, thinking, what the hell are you doing? A lot of people who haven't actually been on a sheep hunt, you don't realize how tough it is. You know, there's no ramps up to the top of these mountains and there's no grab rails on the way up there. So the journey that got you to that point is a tough one. Nine months ago, I was learning how to walk again and, you know, and trying to figure out how to balance run. To be able to say that I'm going up these mountains, like, this is occupational therapy. You are the only people out here for miles and miles and miles. All shell at the back end of this. Should be a pretty hard climb, but see what we got on the other side. 
sheep hunting seems to be a lot about strategizing and right now I think there needs to be a lot of strategy for me. I think you're right. Well, I bet it would be better to cut off because this gets steeper. My leg does not like this. Your arms work fine. <laughs> I would like do something cool like where I always go Ennis out, but I don't really feel safe moving right now. <laughs> She's being difficult, so we'll cut our way in. I mean, it'll, get, it'll just help me out period so I can take my leg on and off without having to take my pants off. <laughs> Holy crap. We went treasure hunting. Oh, that's gonna be fun. A year and eight months ago, I lost my left leg above the knee, and then shortly thereafter, I had my last amputation where they cut two inches of my femur off. What I've seen with the Warriors that we've hosted is, it's just a matter of putting one foot in front of the other. Maybe struggling at times, but still just the fact that I'm out here crawling around, you know, walking in the back country of Alaska is pretty amazing. I think this is either way, this is too much, ain't it?